Despite the approaching breath of autumn, the weather was unusually warm. A light breeze wrapped around the passers-by, giving them the illusion of a gentle bird feather brushing against their skin. The sun filtered through the airport's panoramic windows, bathing the space in soft glimmers. Andrea was checking boarding passes. She had always dreamed of the sky. Perhaps her future choice was influenced by her father, who was a civil aviation pilot and had died during a long flight through a snowstorm. Since childhood, she had watched planes leave the ground and a spark would ignite in her heart. One day she would be in the sky, but for now she dreamed while gazing at the clouds. And so one fine day, she became an international flight attendant. Since then, her life had been filled with bright moments and each flight still brought excitement and thrill. Today, she faced a long return flight to the capital. Andrea was already mentally picturing a quiet, cozy apartment, dinner with a view of the city at night, and a few hours of sleep before starting a new day in her home country. If only Harry were on this flight. Although that's not a given. Lately, they had been running into each other less and less, she thought sadly. They had met about two months ago and immediately felt a mutual affection. Harry was an architect returning home after a long business trip abroad for knowledge exchange with international partners. On that warm June day, Harry couldn't find his suitcase, lost in the baggage compartment, and Andrea helped him. Out of gratitude, Harry invited his saviour to a cafe. Since then, they had occasionally met if their flights coincided, but there was no consistency in their relationship. Harry was always travelling, and Andrea also spent most of her time in the sky. However, they had much in common, starting with their love for painting. Harry even took some of Andrea's works abroad to show at a young talent's exhibition, but she didn't have high hopes for its success. Good morning, a somewhat gruff voice said. A man with his son, slightly taller than average, was shifting from foot to foot at the counter. Good morning, Andrea said. She entered the details into the system. Here are your boarding passes. Please proceed to the waiting area in half an hour. Have a pleasant flight. Due to her profession, Andrea made an effort to be polite with every passenger. Their lively conversations mixed with announcements of departing flights, creating a chaotic but familiar airport noise. Children pushed colourful wheeled suitcases back and forth between their parents, whose faces reflected both excitement and anticipation for the upcoming journey. Older people wore calmer faces, as if they had grown accustomed to this hustle. Andrea, as always, was at the centre of this whirlwind, managing the flow of people, directing them, and ensuring a comfortable boarding process. So, Andrea, ready for the flight, asked Karin, her colleague approaching the counter. You seem so thoughtful. Maybe a little, she replied. But it's just that mum is worried. I hired a caregiver for her, but she's still unhappy. Andrea shook her head trying to hide the sadness that had settled inside. By the way, how's it going with Harry? I suppose there's a wedding soon, Karen asked somewhat bluntly. What wedding? We've only met a couple of times. And that was just for dinner at a cafe, Andrea replied. Really? And did you think it would turn out differently, Karen was surprised. No, I'm fine with it. We still won't be living together, Karen said with a hint of envy. They've set up breakfast for the crew. Everything's ready in the break room. Yeah, I'll be there in a moment Andrea was finishing up paperwork. I'll just wait for my replacement. A few minutes later, the flight attendants were seated at the table, engrossed in conversation about the upcoming flight and their weekend plans, Soon an announcement came over the intercom about the boarding of their flight. Andrea checked her uniform, adjusted her hair and headed towards the plane. She loved her job the chance to see the world, meet people from different countries and assist them in their travels.
Every time she climbed the boarding stairs, she felt a surge of enthusiasm. The cabin was full. Passengers were settling into their seats, discussing their vacation plans and taking last-minute photos before takeoff. Andrea walked through the cabin, ensuring everyone was buckled up and everything was ready for departure. Please, a moment of your attention, she said into the microphone. We are beginning preparations. Please take your seats and fasten your seatbelts. The plane smoothly rolled down the runway, gaining speed. Andrea watched the changing landscape through the window. The city, buildings, cars all grew smaller, gradually blending into the clouds. What a beauty. And no one to capture it, she thought, and, smiling at the passengers, said, Have a pleasant flight. The first few hours passed calmly. She served passengers, refilling drinks, distributing food, and answering questions. Andrea tried to ensure everyone felt comfortable and cosy. Unfortunately, the apparent calm did not last long. Just a couple of hours later, the plane hit a turbulent zone. The cabin shook violently, and passengers grew anxious, gripping the armrests. Attention, Andrea said, trying to remain calm. We have entered a turbulent zone. Please remain in your seats and fasten your seatbelts. The shaking intensified. The plane swayed from side to side. The sound of the engines grew louder, and the cabin filled with an incredible din. At that moment, Andrea suddenly heard distressing sounds. Help, shouted a man. My son is unwell. She quickly moved towards the source of the sound. In the window seat was the boy who had recently checked in with his father. Now the little boy looked pale, with difficulty breathing and tears in his eyes. His chalk white face was covered in a cold sweat. What's wrong with the child? Andrea asked, leaning over the little passenger. Davy has asthma. Can't you see? the father replied with evident displeasure. From his clothing and demeanor, Andrea immediately recognized him as a businessman from that unpleasant category who considered themselves masters of the world. Such people are always dissatisfied and looking for someone to blame. Yet, the man's eyes showed panic. Please help him. Don't just stand there like a statue he can't breathe, he croaked, while Karen, standing nearby, was paralyzed with fear. Helping an adult was one thing, but a child was entirely different. Andrea quickly assessed the situation and realized there was no time to waste. Fortunately, she always carried a small medical kit. It contained an inhaler. Got it, she exhaled, and in the same instant, she took out the inhaler and helped the boy take several puffs. Don't be afraid, everything will be all right, Andrea said, stroking his head. Just breathe deeply and don't worry. A tear slowly rolled down the boy's cheek, making her heart literally flutter. Gradually, his breathing stabilized and color returned to his face. Andrea continued to sit by Davy, calming him and monitoring his condition. Thank you, the father grumbled with marked disdain when his son finally began to breathe normally. I'll take it from here. You're welcome. I'm glad I could help, Andrea replied. Her words were met with a round of applause from the passengers, who were impressed by her calmness and professionalism. Then something strange happened that left her stunned. Davy, taking advantage of the pause, suddenly slipped a crumpled piece of paper into the pocket of her uniform. Andrea flinched and looked at the boy in surprise. What's this? Some kind of trick, she wondered. But Davy, with a serious expression, put his finger to his lips as if to signal quiet. No need to make a fuss, Andrea gave a slight nod and stepped aside. The boy's father, Owen James, looked at her with a disapproving glare, making Andrea feel uneasy. The turbulence gradually subsided, and she returned to her duties. However, Mr. James did not express gratitude on the contrary. He scowled and reproached her. You should have warned us in advance. 
due to your negligence, my son fell ill. This airline is a fly-by-night operation. I'm Owen James, and my name is known in every business circle. Andrea felt a surge of indignation but tried to keep her emotions in check. She knew that it was important to remain calm and professional in such situations. We warned about possible turbulence, she replied, trying to keep her voice steady. And we did everything to ensure safety. That's not true. Mr. James continued to fume. You're neglecting your duties. I'm going to complain to your superiors. Well, that's your right, Andrea said calmly. But tell me, are you accusing me of saving your son's life? The man, taken aback by her sharp response, was momentarily stunned. Am I to blame then? But Mr. James didn't get an answer. Andrea turned away and walked with a proud stride down the aisle. Mr. James followed her with a scornful look and turned his attention back to his son. Davy immediately darkened, as if his father's presence made him uncomfortable. Andrea approached the boy from time to time, asking questions and trying to support him, but he responded with short phrases. It seemed that Davy was hiding something, and Andrea instinctively felt that he was dealing with serious problems. She hesitated to read the note, but when the plane began its descent, she finally seized the moment. Unfolding the crumpled paper, she read help. Mr. James is not my father. He won't let me go outside and keeps me locked up. Andrea's hands trembled, and her heart ached for the little lonely boy. She tried to remain calm so as not to scare him. It was now clear to her that Erwin James was not Davy's real father, which explained a lot. Davy, I read your note. Don't be afraid, I will help you, Andrea said softly. The boy looked at her in surprise, and a flicker of hope appeared in his eyes. You'll help. But Mr. James won't let me go. I will contact the police as soon as we land, Andrea replied firmly. But for now, please don't worry. You don't know Mr. James, Davy whispered forlornly. He will find me anywhere. After my mum died, he's not afraid of anything. He's taking me abroad to help open a safe deposit box, but I pretended to forget the code, and that's why he's so angry. Don't worry, I'll make sure he doesn't find you, Andrea tried to reassure him. Tears welled up in Davy's eyes, and for the first time during the flight he allowed himself to release the pent-up emotions. Thank you, he whispered, pressing his hand to his chest. Andrea gently sat beside him and hugged him. The rest of the flight passed without incident, and the plane landed smoothly. Andrea, breathing a sigh of relief, felt the tension that had gripped her throughout the flight begin to ease but one question still occupied her mind what to do about the note. When the plane stopped and the jet bridge was attached, Andrea exited the cabin, pondering her next steps. But her thoughts were interrupted by a sharp voice. Please come with us. She flinched and saw two men in uniform in front of her. What's going on? Andrea asked, feeling her heart squeeze with anxiety. We need you to come with us due to an unfortunate incident, one of them replied. A crime occurred in the cabin. Andrea was bewildered. What do you mean? she asked, trying to understand what was happening. We'll need to check your bag, said the older security guard tersely. Well, if you must, Andrea replied. Soon she was escorted to a small room where they asked her to open her bag. Andrea's eyes were immediately drawn to a strange item she hadn't seen before. Well, what do you know? exclaimed one of the security guards, pulling a man's wallet from her bag. But it's not mine. Andrea cried out. I swear, I don't know anything about this. Calm down, Miss Wood, said the other guard. We'll check everything. 
At that moment, a man in an expensive suit entered the room. Andrea immediately recognized him as the passenger Erwin James. Her mood plummeted. There he is. Found him, said the security guard with a sycophantic look. What a coincidence. Who would have thought, said the businessman. You stole my wallet and took the money? You've set this up quite cleverly. Andrea was horrified. She realized she had been framed. But what could she say in her defense? I didn't take anything, Andrea whispered. Oh, don't lie to me. Erwin James dismissed her. I don't think we should jump to conclusions, Andrea intervened. Please say you don't believe these accusations. I have witnesses the crew, the passengers. I've never done anything like this. Well, witnesses and passengers can't completely confirm your innocence, said the head of security. The fact remains. How can this be? I've worked here for three years and never had any problems, Andrea pleaded. Our airline has strict rules, said Mr. Scott, the head of security, and theft is a serious crime. But I'm not guilty, Andrea exclaimed, almost in tears. No tears, please. Let's go and have a chat, Owen James suggested, trying to pull Andrea with him. Where are you taking me? she asked. Where else? To the police, of course, replied the businessman. They'll question you and sort things out. Wait, interjected the head of security. You can't handle company employees like this. We'll conduct an internal investigation ourselves. Meanwhile, until all the facts are clear, Miss Wood will be suspended from work. Erwin James frowned. No, this won't do. So you want to protect a thief? I know your investigation, you'll just cover it up. And who will compensate me for the moral damage? I almost had a heart attack when my wallet went missing. But the head of security merely shook his head, signaling that the conversation was over. Andrea was in despair. She had been framed, and she had no idea why. I need protection the girl whispered. Someone did this on purpose. It's quite possible, Mr. Scott said. We'll find out. For now, it's best if you go home. But Andrea wanted to tell him about Davy and the note, but she realized that her words no longer interested anyone. She was alone against everyone. Since no one detained her, Andrea went home, though the usual joy of returning was missing. She wished she had skipped this ill-fated flight. What could she say to the police now? That a little boy with a vivid imagination gave her a note on the plane. And if asked about the note, she'd say it was slander against the boy's father? Andrea clearly imagined that everyone would think she was lying intentionally. And what would her late father's colleague say? She couldn't bear to think about it. Tears welled up in Andrea's eyes. It was a pity that Harry wasn't on this flight. He would have surely defended her and taught that arrogant businessman a lesson. But what's the point of dwelling on it? What's done is done. Time cannot be turned back. Her mood was so low that she didn't even feel like drawing, whereas before, returning from each flight, she would eagerly take up her pencil. Images of her childhood suddenly flashed in her mind a sunny summer day, her father's strong arms lifting her into the air like a feather, and his infectious laughter. Her father's words, filled with tenderness and pride, had become her guiding star, shaping her future path. Andrea had listened with rapt attention to stories of flights, the endless expanses of the sky, encounters with clouds, and the mesmerizing beauty of sunsets seen from above. She absorbed every story like a sponge, dreaming of the day she would be either in the cockpit or the cabin herself. Dad, is it scary to fly, she asked one day with innocent curiosity, looking at her father with admiration. Mr. Wood, smiling his broad, kind smile, patted her on the head no. Andrea, it's not scary. Fear is weakness. 
and you and I are strong. We're warriors, and nothing scares us. Childhood passed in an atmosphere of enthusiastic admiration for her father's profession. She remembered every takeoff and landing, every story about complex weather conditions and overcoming difficulties. In these moments, her father's words resonated in her memory like a gentle melody. Mr. Wood was a real pilot, a hero to many, and certainly to her. She recalled the story her mother had told her countless times. There had been a fierce blizzard, snow that covered everything, an emergency landing in a field, the passengers' fear, and Mr. Wood's steady hand as he landed the plane in an open field after one of the engines failed. He saved everyone. A true hero, her mother would say, her eyes filling with tears of joy and pride. Andrea wiped away a tear as she remembered that rough landing on an unprepared field in challenging weather conditions. Mr. Wood had received a medal, a high honor for courage and professionalism. Sadly, it was posthumous, responsible for the passengers, and the co-pilot who refused to take over, he sacrificed his life to save everyone except himself. The main impact had been on the captain's side of the aircraft. Suddenly, she was overcome with nostalgia. She remembered how much she had to study to achieve her goal of becoming a flight attendant. Andrea passed her exams with flying colors, received her diploma, and surprisingly nailed her interview on the first try. She then completed the official training course for the profession. She learned the special terminology and prepared for working in the sky. Unfortunately, back then, she didn't know that stepping into adult life would bring a host of problems capable of turning her world upside down. Andrea smiled to herself and remembered that summer filled with the scent of jasmine, warm evenings and distant sounds of music. That was when she had received an invitation to a party from her friend Laurie. Without hesitation, Andrea agreed. The party was packed with people. The sounds of laughter, glasses of champagne, and light music created an atmosphere of carefree fun. At that moment, someone called out to her. Andrea turned and saw a young man of about twenty with a mischievous sparkle in his eyes and a kind smile. You're simply beautiful. Can we get to know each other, he asked. Of course, why not, she replied, slightly embarrassed. I'm Andrea, she introduced herself. Chris, the young man, extended his hand, and she immediately felt something special in his touch that made her heart beat faster. The evening flew by in a moment. Chris was attentive, gallant, and Andrea, who had never believed in fairy tales, felt like the heroine of a romantic novel. He was a wealthy, influential, and handsome young man, while she was a simple girl who could hardly believe her luck. But why not a fairy tale? Chris was like a hero from a romantic novel tall, stately, with beautiful, slightly haughty features and brown eyes. His mannerisms immediately revealed his background as son of rich and influential parents. Tell me, doesn't it bother you that I come from a poor family and not a wealthy one? Andrea asked when Chris once again, seemingly casually, held her gaze. Bother me. Not at all, Chris replied with a slight smirk. You're wonderful, and that's what matters. To Andrea's great surprise, Chris turned out to be remarkably easy to talk to, nothing like she had imagined children of wealthy parents to be. He laughed at her jokes, listened to her stories, and shared anecdotes about high society life and connections with important people. I just want to be with you to be happy. You're completely different, real Chris once said. Thus began their acquaintance. Chris started calling, inviting her on dates, giving flowers, taking her to fancy restaurants, and introducing her to his friends. Immersed in his attention, Andrea drifted further from her modest former life and blended into his world of luxury and carefree living. I'm so happy with you, she confessed one day while sitting by the river during a nature outing. And I'm happy with you, Chris replied, taking her hand in his. I want us to get married. 
Andrea was on cloud nine. Like any girl, she dreamed of a life beside Chris a cozy home, a happy family travels. The wedding was being planned on a grand scale. Mrs. Evans, the bridegroom's mother, a commanding and self-assured woman, immediately took charge. The bride's dress, the restaurant, the guests, everything was meticulously planned by her. Andrea, dear, you must understand that now you're part of our circle. You'll have everything you want, but you must fit in, learn manners, dress with taste, and behave appropriately. Don't disgrace our family, Mrs. Evans once said over dinner, looking at Andrea with a hint of condescension. Andrea eagerly followed all the instructions, attended etiquette courses, and learned how to speak, dress, and behave in high society. She was willing to do anything. You're controlling Andrea too much, Chris told his mother one day. She's a wonderful girl and doesn't need your guidance. Oh, Chris, you're still so young, Mrs. Evans replied. I'm just looking out for you and your future. Andrea is not from our circle. She won't understand or appreciate our life and traditions. In fact, you shouldn't tie your life to someone who doesn't suit you. But Chris was in love and paid no heed to his mother's words. The wedding day arrived. Andrea, in a splendid white dress, stood before the mirror, anxious but with happiness in her heart today she was marrying the love of her life. Oh, Andrea, you look so beautiful, Mrs. Hughes said, approaching her daughter with indescribable excitement in her voice. This dress is simply magnificent on you. You look like a real princess, and I can't believe how you've grown. Sweetheart, I'm so proud of you and love you more than words can express. May every day be as bright and special as this one, and may your life be filled with happiness and harmony. I will always be here to support and help you. Thank you, Mum, she replied with a smile. The ceremony went wonderfully. But soon, an hour before the wedding banquet, Something happened that turned Andrea's whole world upside down. The bride arrived at the venue, but the groom was still missing. Ten minutes past 20.30. The guests began to get anxious. At that moment, Andrea's best friend Laurie approached her and quietly said, Andrea, I just found out. Chris has left. He's not coming. Andrea couldn't believe her ears. Her familiar world crumbled in an instant, tears flooded her face, and guests whispered among themselves. Her future mother-in-law looked on with a contemptuous smirk at her suffering. You're just embarrassing our family. Leave and never come back, Mrs. Evans said, stifling a sneer. Andrea stood there, frozen, unable to utter a word. Her heart was breaking from pain, humiliation, and resentment. She had become a laughingstock, the subject of gossip, and her future and dreams had collapsed in a moment. How could Chris do this? What about his words? Had he been lying all along? The humiliation she experienced that day left an unhealable wound that periodically reminded her of itself. But now... The accusation of theft outweighed the pain of the past. Andrea managed to pull herself together, especially since her mother, who had been ill for several months, was waiting for her at home. It's certainly not the time to fall apart, she thought. Harry was silent. Maybe something had happened? She remembered the note in her pocket, but wasn't sure what to do with it. She still hadn't decided whether to go to the police after the theft accusation. Irwin had certainly outmaneuvered her. And how did he even find out about the note? Apparently, the world still had good people. The familiar apartment building appeared ahead, where she had spent her childhood and youth. The entrance, elevator and staircase with the necessary door number. Andrea inserted the key into the lock and, inadvertently shaking off the fatigue from the long flight, entered the apartment. The smell of medicine mixed with a faint hint of floor cleaner hit her nose, instantly transporting her to the familiar atmosphere of a hospital room. 
but instead of sterile whiteness, muted tones of old furniture and similarly aged wallpaper dominated the space. Andrea, you're back, Mrs. Hughes' horse, weak voice said. Andrea smiled, trying to keep her face from showing the fatigue and worry she had been through. Hi, Mum. How are you feeling, she asked. Mrs. Hughes lay on the couch, covered with a warm blanket. Her eyes were half closed. Better, dear, her mother whispered. But Paula. Andrea glanced at the caregiver, an older woman with sharp features and an unpleasant demeanor. Paula sat in the corner, listlessly flipping through the pages of a worn newspaper, seemingly ignoring their conversation. Hello, Paula, Andrea began, trying to keep her voice friendly despite a slight edge of tension. Paula looked up with such indifference that Andrea involuntarily shivered. Hello, Paula muttered without getting up from her seat. How is mum doing today? Did you check her blood pressure, Andrea asked, trying to gauge the truth behind Paula's claims about her mother's condition. She's fine. Slept as usual, the caregiver replied tersely. Okay, Andrea felt that something wasn't right but couldn't pinpoint what. Worry slowly crept into her heart. Her mother had always been very punctual with her medication, and any deviation from the schedule could be dangerous for her health. Everything's as it should be, Paula said, still not looking at Andrea, and left the room, closing the door behind her. From the kitchen, a loud conversation on a mobile phone could be heard Paula was discussing something with someone. Andrea, dear Mrs. Hughes, suddenly whispered, I think Paula is stealing my medicine. Andrea flinched. Honestly, she had considered this possibility before but tried to push it away, unwilling to believe such treachery. Mum, are you sure Andrea tried to calm her? Of course I've noticed that the bottles of expensive medication are running out too quickly. Sometimes I wake up and the pills are gone, even though I distinctly remember placing them on the nightstand Mrs. Hughes argued with effort, as if each word took all her remaining strength. Mum, maybe it's just your imagination Andrea tried to smooth things over, though she knew she needed to take her mother's words seriously. No, I'm not mistaken, Andrea Mrs. Hughes fell silent as her strength clearly waned. Andrea approached her mother and patted her hand. Don't worry, I'll sort everything out. Be careful, I think she might be dangerous, Mrs. Hughes added. Andrea realized her mother was seriously distressed, and action needed to be taken quickly. Okay, I'll talk to Paula, Andrea said, trying to sound confident despite feeling otherwise. Don't trust her, her mother whispered, clutching her daughter's hand. Andrea left the room and headed for the kitchen. As she walked, she frantically thought through the situation. The thought of Paula possibly stealing medication from her sick mother filled her with anger and disgust. But how could she prove it? Paula, I need to talk to you, Andrea began, trying to be as polite as possible, though her inner turmoil was palpable. Oh, is that so? Well, go ahead, the caregiver replied with a hint of irony. Mum complains that the medication runs out quickly, Andrea started cautiously. Well, the new medications have been prescribed. They're more effective, so they run out faster as per the instructions Paula snapped. But Mum said she saw you taking the medication while she was asleep, Andrea cut to the point. She's just imagining things. The woman always sees things Paula hissed. Paula, please be honest. Are you really taking the medication Andrea asked desperately, staring intently into the caregiver's eyes? And what exactly are you doing here? Sticking your nose into things that aren't your business, Paula suddenly raised her voice. Stay out of my work. I just want to make sure mum is okay, 
and I won't tolerate anyone stealing her medication. Andrea stood her ground. She's to blame herself she could buy cheaper medicine, the caregiver sneered. You have no right to speak about my mother like that, Andrea shot back. And you have no right to interfere in my work, Paula retorted, moving closer, her eyes flashing with malice. Get out of here, and don't ever come back. Andrea recoiled, a wave of fear washing over her. Let's see who gets kicked out of here, Paula hissed and, hastily dressing, stormed out of the apartment, slamming the door so hard that an old clock fell off the wall. With trembling hands, Andrea leaned against the wall. She now realized that Paula was indeed a dangerous person and would stop at nothing to protect her own interests. Andrea, what's happening? Her mother's voice called out. Andrea rushed back to her. Mom, I was just talking to Paula. We'll sort it out, don't worry, she tried to reassure her mother, though she knew the situation was spiraling out of control. She needs to be fired, Andrea. She's dangerous. I think she wants to take our home, Mrs. Hughes whispered. Yes, of course. Don't worry, I'll handle it, Andrea promised and wearily sank into a chair. Problems seemed to pile up one after another. What next? Deciding she needed a moment to regroup, Andrea changed her mother's bed, tidied the room, and took a bath. Meanwhile, she mentally berated herself. As Mrs. Hughes watched her daughter, she spoke about her day of phone call with a friend, a book she read, and her dreams. Andrea listened attentively, interrupting only occasionally to ask clarifying questions. It was important to her that her mother didn't feel alone. You know, Andrea, Mrs. Hughes said after a pause, I think you need a distraction. You look tired. Maybe you should work on your drawings. It might help you relax. Good idea. Andrea smiled. Indeed, she needed to distract herself from the troubling thoughts. Drawing was her favorite activity, always calming and revitalizing. Andrea stood up, draped a light blanket over her shoulders, and headed to her room, where her easel stood. And what are you going to draw? Her mother asked with interest, watching Andrea take out brushes and paint from a drawer. I don't know yet, Mum. Let the colors guide me, Andrea replied as she took a brush, dipped it in dark blue paint, and made a decisive first stroke. She painted compositions, but with smooth, flowing movements, as if the brush were guiding her hand in a dance. You've gotten even better at painting. Your colors are like songs they speak of your feelings, of your soul, her mother said with admiration. Thank you. Andrea smiled, enchanted by her own creation. She felt the tension accumulated from the day dissolving into the flow of colors. Blue merged into purple, purple into soft pink. On the canvas appeared an image of a starry night sky. After a moment's thought, Andrea added a few strokes of golden paint, as if reflecting sunlight. And what's that? Mrs. Hughes asked, pointing to a small bright yellow patch on the canvas. That's the sun, Mum, the sun that always shines for us. Mrs. Hughes smiled. Andrea continued painting adding a few small violet flowers like lilac clouds. Suddenly inspired, she took white paint and painted a delicate bird with outstretched wings, soaring towards the sky. And this is the bird of happiness. It will bring you health. How beautiful, dear, Mrs. Hughes said admiringly. Finally, Andrea stepped back and surveyed her work. The canvas depicted a magical night sky full of stars, a bright sun, soft lilac clouds, and a white bird reaching for the sky. You're very talented, Andrea, Mrs. Hughes said, her eyes shining with admiration. It's real magic. Thank you, Mum, Andrea replied and hugged her mother's cheek. I'll paint something else for you soon. She really felt better. 
drawing helped her distract from anxious thoughts and filled her with strength. Now Andrea knew that everything would be all right. She was with her mother, and the love of those close to her was the strongest medicine in the world. Suddenly the phone rang. Andrea flinched, her heart skipped a beat. Finally. It's Harry. Hi, Andrea. Sorry for calling so late. I already know about your work problems and have hired you a good lawyer. That Irwin James is quite a piece of work. After the death of the young heir's mother, Davy, he took everything into his own hands, depriving the boy of any freedom, Harry said excitedly. Hi. How did you find out about all this? She asked in surprise. Harry hesitated for a moment, then suddenly said something Andrea least expected to hear. Andrea, don't be upset, but my father. How should I put this? Well, he's the owner of the airline where you work. I didn't want to tell you. My parents divorced when I was ten, but I still keep in touch with both my mother and father. Andrea gasped in surprise. What a revelation right before bed. Only now did she realize why she hadn't been arrested upon arrival and why the head of security tactfully took a pause for an alleged investigation. And why Harry's endless business trips seemed to always involve flights serviced by Andrea. It all seemed so coincidental. So everything was a lie. About being an architect and all that? She asked in a trembling voice stepping into another room to avoid disturbing her mother's rest. There was a tense pause on the line for a moment before Harry said with fervor, No, of course not. Do you think I would pretend to be an architect just to find a bride? Someone who would be interested in me, not my money? The confession touched Andrea deeply. Of course she didn't want to scold Harry. After all, he meant well. Harry. I'm sorry, but I don't even know what to say. Give me some time to think. Of course, Andrea, take your time. By the way, I have some great news for you. Remember I said I'd show some of your works abroad? Well, one of the galleries is interested. They want to exhibit your works and sign a contract with their author. Believe me, it's a very lucrative deal, you can't even imagine how much Harry's voice was filled with genuine joy. Andrea was initially speechless. She was overwhelmed with emotions. Harry, is this really happening? I can't believe it. Yes, it's true, Andrea. They are thrilled with your technique and the soul you put into each piece. They are confident that your paintings will be successful. Harry said with such enthusiasm that Andrea felt a surge of joy for herself. I've always painted for myself, for the soul. Well, for my mum. Andrea was in shock at such an unexpected turn of events. That's exactly what attracted them to your work. You paint from the heart, and it shows in every line, every brushstroke. You're a real talent, Andrea. Now you have a chance to show many people what you're worth. Harry exclaimed. But, Mum, I don't know what to do. I can't leave her alone, Andrea worried. I understand, but you need to think about yourself and your future. You deserve the best, and this contract could change your life. I think your mum would be happy to see you happy, and I've already taken care of Mrs. Hughes' surgery. Representatives from a private clinic will contact her soon for a consultation. Tears welled up in Andrea's eyes. I'll think about it, Harry. Thank you for everything. She hung up the phone and, returning to the room, looked at her mother. Harry called. He offered an exhibition in Paris and a collaboration with a gallery. That's just wonderful, dear. I'm so proud of you. Mrs. Hughes smiled, her face literally glowing with happiness. But I don't know what to do. I'm afraid to leave you alone. I'll miss you terribly, Andrea replied, sitting down next to her and taking her mother's hand. Darling, don't worry so much. You need to move forward, realize your dreams, 
and I'll be here, even if from a distance. We'll talk every day, and if you can, come to see me as often as possible. Mrs. Hughes countered, squeezing her daughter's hand. She looked at her with such love and support that Andrea felt like a true heroine. Thank you, Mum. You're the best, Dot Dash Andrea sniffled and hugged her, feeling warmth and tenderness. That night, Andrea couldn't fall asleep for a long time. She thought about Harry, the foreign gallery, and her mother's happy smile. She knew that she faced a difficult choice, but in her heart, there was hope for a happy future and the realization of her dream gaining recognition in the field of visual arts. The next morning, Andrea woke up feeling refreshed and with a decision made. She had called Harry during the night to say she agreed to sign the contract. He smiled, then puzzled her with new, equally shocking information that had been revealed the previous evening. Thanks to the actions of the experienced lawyer, Erwin James, Davy's stepfather, was having serious problems and had been arrested half an hour ago on charges of poisoning the young heir's mother. In trying to frame Andrea and silence her, Erwin had only implicated himself and ended up behind bars. But the biggest surprise awaited Andrea ahead. It turned out that the unfortunate wallet had been planted in her handbag by Karen, who envied her relationship with Harry. But that wasn't all. During the interrogation, Karen admitted that Mrs. Hughes' caregiver was her half-sister. What a family full of deceit and dishonesty. Following her younger sister's example, Paula did not deny her guilt and admitted to stealing medicine from Mrs. Hughes. However, the compassionate woman decided not to press charges and let her go as she had an upcoming surgery and a long rehabilitation ahead at one of the best medical centers in the country. Two and a half months flew by unnoticed. During this time, Andrea and Harry accomplished much. Firstly, they signed contracts with overseas art enthusiasts, and secondly, they got married. This time, everything was real in Andrea's life matchmaking, the wedding ceremony, and no runaway grooms, unlike with Chris. The newlyweds also paid attention to Davy, who, having testified against his stepfather in court, expressed his desire to become Harry's adopted son. The judge, having learned all the details of the case, did not object and granted permission. Davy quickly adapted to his new home, where he was surrounded by care and attention. He found a real family that needed and loved him. Andrea and Harry turned out to be not only wonderful parents but also faithful friends who were always there to support and help. Every Sunday they gladly visited Grandma, who delighted the little boy with her stories and delicious treats. The warm and affectionate grandmother became a source of wisdom and warmth for him, and her love and care were a true treasure for Davy. Thus began a new life for little Davy, filled with joy, laughter, and happiness. The boy found his place in the world, and his future was now as bright as his dreams. Thank you for listening to the story till the end. Please support the channel with a like. It won't take much effort, but it means a lot to me. See you next time.